Okay, so uh, now you have all the text, uh, the biography of Chaucer, and probably you need um, was uh, was taken prisoner, prisoner and ransomed. Ransomed vuol dire um, salvato, diciamo liberato. Um, background was the urban middle class, which was a social class, la classe media, la borghesia grew up in close contact with the royal family, grew up, quindi crebbe a contatto con uh, la famiglia reale, um, and appointed, was appointed, venne, um, diciamo, assunto come, um, come controllore della customs, quindi della dogana, um, the port of London, um, and then... Uh, there was probably dismissed, it was dismissed, licenziato, fired from all his offices, da tutti i suoi incarichi and um, pensions doubled, la pensione duplicata rented a house, affittò una casa and there was, he was buried in his, uh, in what is known as the Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey. Ok, quindi è stato uno, il primo poeta ad essere seppellito appunto nella abbazia di West, the Westminster. Ok, now let's have a look. Um, ok, now let's see why is called the father of English literature. Chaucer is regarded the father of English literature as and as the first major secular poet. Um, it is uh, very important to remember that Chaucer was is one of the first uh, authors, uh, known authors of English literature, because you remember that um, in the epic poem as well as in the ballads, uh, the authors were unknown, okay? So we don't know, we didn't know the name of the authors or the writers of these uh, uh, poems and ballads. Um, and Chaucer is the first known English uh, um, writer. He is also considered as the first major secular poet because he was the first to use the language spoken in London. Okay, so the English language spoken in London. So it is particularly important and we can also uh, underline... Um, okay... Um, is, uh, is one of the first poets to be known by name, okay, one of the first English poets to be known by name, so it was, we know the name of the writer, and his language is the dialect of his native London, so he didn't use any Latin or French or Anglo-Saxons, but he used the native, the, the, the English spoken in London. And this English gradually became standard English. So we can say that he was the father of English literature because he um, uh, started to use the language which uh, was uh, the language of common people. And um, his language is the basis of modern English. So we can say that he's actually the father. Uh, there is a third reason, which is uh, um, um, that is because the country Canterbury Tales represented, uh, gave to the readers a real painting a real uh, portrait of English society of the time. So we can say that his work is a real representation of uh, England at this time. Uh, then we have the division in two, three periods, 
um, the French period uh, because it, it was influenced by um, three, by first of all, by French literature, by Italian literature, because as you remember in his life, he traveled a lot and he also had the possibility to meet uh, um, Dante, uh, to, to, to know Dante, Petrarca and Boccaccio. Um, so his uh, influence was important of the Italian, from the Italian literature, but he also evolved his own English um, characteristic. So uh, we can say that uh, his most important work written in the English period is the Canterbury Tales. So remember that in the English period, he uh, wrote, it was the last period of his life, he wrote the Canterbury Tales. While in the French period, you can remember, and in the Italian period, he made, he wrote other books, other uh, works, but they are not so famous as the Canterbury Tales. What about the cultural insight? Uh, we are talking about the 14th century English society, so it was uh, completely different from uh, every, anything before. So, um, in the 14th century, as it happened also in Italy, we have the rise of a new middle class, okay, which was rural and urban. Um, okay, but how was it possible, the rise of this new middle class? Okay, as on the book it is not very clear, I made this um, scheme for you, and I'll explain. Okay, you see that, you remember that there was the rise of a new middle class we read on the book. What kind of middle class was it? So why do they talk about urban, urban middle class and rural middle class? The urban middle class were the merchants, okay, because they lived in the cities and they, um, they trade, uh, um, their, their goods, okay, so, and new men that were free men who had lands, they were, they represented the rural middle class. How did they um, increase their possessions, their uh, property? The merchants uh, lent money to the king for wars, okay? So the king had to pay back money and they um, increased their capital. While the yeomen increased the food prices. So they became richer because thanks to the food prices which increased and also they increased the price of wool. And you remember, you probably know that uh, wool trade was a chief industry, production of clothes, of um, um, of clothes and many other um, and also also fabric okay so they uh, became richer thanks to these two activities but that is not all because in the cities there were also other kinds of artisans so uh, I was uh, we were talking about the city so in the city there were not only um, um, uh, merchants, but also a lot of artisans and tradesmen. And, uh, for example, we had bakers, uh, shoemakers, uh, tailors, butchers, and many others, okay? So they um, played, they played a different role in the city. They did something different. So they started to organize in guilds, okay, or guilds. 
uh, which are, were which may be translated as associazioni di arti o mestieri o sindacati, okay, trade guilds, okay. So you you will find it as trade guilds, okay. So the guilds were associations, and they protected the interests of the different workers in the city. So the situation also for uh, artisans and tradesmen started to improve. Okay, the last thing to see is what the, the guilds do. Okay, um, the guilds, uh, these associations, they guaranteed the quality, they controlled the quality of the goods. Goods means merci. Okay, so we have goods. Okay, they guaranteed the price of goods, so they controlled the price. They also uh, controlled and established the rules for apprenticeship, apprendistato, and they also organized the fairs. So they, um, in special occasions, for example, for the patrons, local patrons, or for um, sacred uh, um, festivities, they organized the fairs, which was a moment of great earn for the uh, for the merchants and for the artisans. Okay, so um, to recapitulate, we go back and we see that. Uh, the rise of the merchants in this cultural insight in questo piccolo capitolo che vi ho sintetizzato perché non mi sembrava un po' confuso spero di non aver fatto peggio io ok we have the new middle class in the city made up of merchants and human um, the merchants are urban um, urban middle class, the human are rural middle class. The merchants became, started to become richer and richer because they lent money to the king in order to organize wars. Because if you remember, starting from Henry II, the king uh, didn't have his personal uh, the possibility to call the barons uh, in on wars, but he had to pay for his uh, private soldiers. Um, and the human increased uh, their uh, situation, they improved uh, their situation because they increased uh, the food prices and they also increased uh, the price of wool, okay, because the chief industry in England was that of the wool. Uh, then we uh, we saw that uh, the artisans and tradesmen in the cities were, for example, butchers, shoemakers, bakers, tailors, and many others. Okay, these were the uh, the artisans, and they started to organize themselves in guilds. Okay, which were association of different um categories so there was the guild of for the butchers the guilds of the tailors the guild of the shoemakers and so on era un'associazione di arti e mestieri come oggi noi abbiamo i sindacati dei eh, lavoratori indipendenti dei lavoratori della scuola i sindacati dei eh, non so del um, de, degli artigiani e via dicendo and the last thing is that which was the role of the kill the guilds what did they do this association they controlled the quality of the good so they um, the guilds were the main um, activity was that of controlling uh, quality of goods uh, the price of goods, the rules, they established the rules for apprenticeship and they organized the fairs. Okay? Okay, that's all. Thank you.
Chapter 1, Section 1.13 Geoffrey Chaucer Exercise 1 Listen and complete Geoffrey Chaucer's biography with the missing information. Geoffrey Chaucer was born about 1343, the son of a rich wine merchant in London. As a young man, he followed Edward III's son to war in France, where he was taken prisoner and ransomed by the king himself in 1360. Although his background was that of the urban middle class, Chaucer grew up in close contact with the royal family and travelled freely between England and France. During the 1370s, his journeys also took him to Italy, where he became interested in Dante, Petrarch and Boccaccio, and extended his readings in Latin to Virgil. In 1374, he was appointed to the office of Controller of the Customs of Wool and Hides in the Port of London. He also became a Member of Parliament for Kent. He was trusted by the Crown and a well-informed participator in the politics of the day, which included support for the religious views of John Wycliffe and Lollardy. The year 1386 was quite a difficult one for Chaucer, because he was dismissed from all his offices and therefore he was left without an income. In this period, he began to work on his masterpiece, The Canterbury Tales. In 1389, he was appointed Clerk of the King's Works at Westminster by King Richard II and later saw his yearly pension doubled by Henry IV. In the same year, Chaucer rented a house at Westminster, where he lived till he died in 1400. He was the first poet to be buried in what is known as Poet's Corner in Westminster Abbey.